The people have been begging for this one. I have two videos out already going over how I would buff Pokemon from older generations in an attempt to make them more competitively viable. In these videos, I try to think of nuanced ways to make these underpowered Pokemon have some kind of niche in competition without just giving them more stats across the board. And today, nearly a year since the previous video, we're finally going to continue this series. Today, we're buffing Generation 3. If you enjoyed this video at any point in time, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. As a matter of fact, you should really just subscribe right now because I have a playlist full of content just like this that you can watch when this video ends. And if you think you're subscribed, do me a favor and double check because not a lot of my viewers actually are. With that, let's get into the video. But not before my gamer subs ad, it's 20 seconds long, tap the right side of your screen three times if you want to skip it, just leave a like first because I warned you, I'm chill like that. This channel is partnered with Gamer Subs. If you want to support my work and get great tasting drinks, you can order Gamer Subs through my link in the description down below or with code MOXIEBOOSTER at checkout for 10% off. Gamer Subs is a caffeinated product that I recommend only to my 18 plus viewers, but my link will send you to their caffeine free product section just in case. Every product purchased through my link supports my channel financially, so I'd really appreciate the support. Now back to the video. Generation 3 has this weird thing going on where Game Freak seemed afraid to give Pokemon stats. Not as bad as Generation 2, but you can definitely feel the power level drop once you check out Pokemon from this gen compared to modern ones. Like I said though, I'm not really interested in just increasing stats on every Pokemon, though I will do that on occasion here, but I'd like to give these Pokemon some kind of niche that other Pokemon wouldn't be able to fill. These changes should allow for people to occasionally be team building and go, man, I really wish my Trick Room setter was a Psychic type with Sturdy and isn't Carbink. Oh, look, Lunaton. Yeah, our first two buffs will be going to Lunatone and Soul Rock. Growing up, I always thought these two were really cool Pokemon, despite their very simple designs. I mean, they're sun and moon shaped rocks, but they're psychic and they can float, so that's kind of cool. The issue here is that defensively, psychic rock is really bad, and these two don't really have much going on offensively either. Their stats are identical, just distributed a little differently, with Lunatone being the one with higher special attack and defense, and Soul Rock having the higher physical attack and defense. First off, let's do these two a favor. We're moving 30 of their speed points into their respective attack stats. And the only other change we're going to be making to them is giving them the hidden ability of Sturdy. As it turns out, Sturdy is a really useful ability for Trick Room setters, and in modern competitive formats, Psychic Pokemon don't get much out of levitating, as they'd much rather be grounded to be protected by Psychic Terrain and giving them access to a more powerful expanding force. Lunatone and Solrock would be really useful Trick Room setters, with Lunatone getting to spam expanding force and terrain, and Solrock getting to be a pretty annoying rock slide spammer. Currently, the only Sturdy Trick room setter is Carbank, who isn't exactly the face of hyper offense. I mean, look at those stats. Speaking of levitating psychic types, Claydol is a notably mid gen 3 Pokemon. One that I actually have in my top 5 favorite Pokemon, and I'm not ashamed of it. I just think he's neat. While I am a VGC YouTuber primarily, I think that giving this thing a niche in singles could actually be pretty cool. As you can see, Claydol has a lot of eyes. Claydol is also a psychic type, and it has access to rapid spin. In my humble opinion, this is enough of a reason to give it the ability Mind's Eye. This would let it do three things. One, this Pokemon can now rapid spin on ghost type Pokemon, removing hazards meaning it has inherent value for its reliability in removing rocks into Pokemon like Golden Go. Number two, Body Press can now hit Steel types, meaning Iron Defense Body Press sets become more reliable, especially into Golden Go. Three, Explosion now hits Ghost types, moving forward. Yet another nearly forgotten Pokemon in Generation 3 is Swalot. The thing about Swalot is that it's a pure Poison type with access to a pretty unremarkable learn set. With just 100 HP, 83 in both defenses, and 73 in both offensive stats, it seems that there are far more viable Poison type Pokemon available, especially considering that Swalot has almost no recovery options. The Automatically, it's meant to be a bit of a glutton. A way I really like buffing old Pokemon is to give them a brand new ability that fits their design. In the case of Swalot, I had an idea for a pretty unique ability. We'll be removing its access to Liquid Ooze and replacing it with its brand new ability of Snack. Yummers. If a Pokemon has the ability Snack, they'll recover 1 16th of their HP at the end of each turn as long as they're holding a berry or leftovers. This means that if Swalot holds a Citrus Berry, it'll recover 1 16th of its health at the end of each turn until it consumes its Citrus Berry, at which point it'll get the 25% recovery from it and it'll stop recovering health from its ability. And in the case of Leftovers, Swalot will heal 1 16th of its health at the end of each turn due to the Leftovers and an additional 1 16th due to Snack, meaning that each turn it'll recover 1 8th of its health, making it a really annoying stall Pokemon. Now, this would be busted on basically any other Pokemon, but we're dealing with Swalot here. Yeah, I think this is pretty good, and it gives it a unique niche in that it's actually got some pretty good longevity on the field. 
The next buff is to Love Disk. Now, Love Disk is a pretty underwhelming Pokemon. In fact, it's not just underwhelming, it's just actively bad. Its highest stat is its 97 base speed, with every other stat failing to go any higher than 65. And no, it doesn't evolve into a Lolomola, despite a lot of people thinking that it should do that. This is the whole Pokemon. This is all we have to work with. I think that the best we can do to patch up this Pokemon is to buff its moveset and grant it another ability. First off, there's no reason for Love Disk to not have access access to Lovely Kiss. It's got Sweet Kiss, which confuses the target, but Lovely Kiss, on the other hand, is a 75 accuracy normal type sleep move, meaning that it's the rare sleep move that is both accurate and bypasses powder immunities from safety goggles or being a grass type. Combining this with the ability Swift Swim is fairly useful in doubles, as with Rain Active, Love Disk can just put things to sleep, sort of like how Lilligant plays in Sun. But I think that granting Love Disk Friend Guard on top of that would actually help its viability out quite a bit. This means that Love Disk's partner Pokemon will only take three quarters damage as long as Love Disk is on the field. And while we're at it, we'll also give it access to follow me. Effectively, what we've made here is a water type mouse hold with a sleep move. Not the best Pokemon, but it's certainly got some strong options. One of the weakest ghost types that we've ever had access to in Pokemon is Bayonet. While a vengeful doll is a pretty banger design, I can't lie, this thing's got nothing going on. It's not bulky, it's not fast, it doesn't hit hard, and its moveset is pretty identical to the average ghost type. It used to have a Mega, which sort of solved this by granting it a massive attack stat and the ability of Prankster, but with that gone, what do we do? We could give it Prankster back, but I think that all we'd end up with is a worse Sableye, as Bayonet doesn't have access to Fake Out and isn't a partial Dark type meaning that it is defensively a little worse off. Once again, I've designed a brand new ability for it. We'll be giving Bayonet the ability Abandonment. This ability causes the opposing Pokemon to be cursed once they knock out the user. Curse is a really strong status as it deals a whopping 25% of the Pokemon's health and damage at the end of each turn. Beyond this, we'll be giving Bayonet access to the move Follow Me, making it so in doubles, Bayonet can now force a Pokemon to attack into it and activate its ability, something that's really solid into super bulky Pokemon like Dondozo or Achaldon, which are really difficult to remove from play. And as a ghost type follow me user, it's actually a really reliable tool in doubles generally since it can't be faked out. This might be like the perfect Bayonet ability. It's thematically appropriate, it's useful, and I designed it, so it has to be good. Cast Form is actually a pretty easy Pokemon to buff. You see, its whole gimmick is that Cast Form changes its type based off of which weather is active. But the issue with that is that while Cast Form has access to Stab on every Weather Ball, no matter what the weather is, this is coming off of a base 70 special attack stat. In fact, it's got 70 in all of its stats, which is pretty unacceptable in modern competitive play. All we need to do is rework its ability slightly. I propose that Forecast not only changes Cast Form's type, but if any weather is active, it will gain a passive 50% increase in its attack and special attack that will subside once the weather clears. This will work similarly to how Protosynthesis does, with it not being an actual stat stage increase, but a passive effect. The plus one speed on Timid Max Speed Cast Form would allow for it to outrun base 130 Pokemon like Tapu Koko or Crobat. And with that speed boost, it now has access to a faster Tailwind or it could smack them with Stab Weather Ball. The damage coming off of this powered up Weather Ball would actually be pretty absurd, as this neutral attack would one-shot a no-bulk Tapu Koko, meaning Cast Form is no longer a mediocre Pokemon all around, but a powerful glass cannon as long as weather is up, and once that weather's gone, it's back to being useless. Before I get to my final buff, I want to include two Pokemon that I think the comment section should attempt to make buffs for. These are going to be Absol and Agron, two fan favorites from Gen 3. You see, Absol struggles from its mediocre speed stat and the fact that it's just straight up outclassed by other dark types like Urshifu, so any buffs to it would need to differentiate it in some way from those and provide it a niche. At the moment, the best I can muster is maybe giving it 100 speed and the ability Sharpness to boost the power of its slashing moves like Night Slash or Psycho Cut. As for Agron, I got nothing. It's got an undesirable rock steel typing, and while it does have access to body press off of that huge 180 defense stat, why not just use stack attack at that point? It's got better stats overall, a better ability, it just it hits harder, I don't know. These are two for you to comment about, so go nuts, come up with some ideas down there. And for our final buff, we're gonna be working on Spinda. I absolutely love this little guy. It's one of my favorite Pokemon of all time and I shiny hunted it in Emerald, but we have an issue. Spinda thematically cannot receive a stat buff. All of Spinda's stats are 60 across the board because this adds up to 360, like 360 degrees, because he spins. So how do we buff a Pokemon with awful base stats that we cannot increase and keep it thematically relevant? It's quite simple. And by simple, I mean it's actually very complicated, but well worth the effort, we'll get there. You see, in Pokemon, 
We not only have move types, but we have move categories, like cutting moves, wind moves, and sound moves. These moves all have special properties to allow for them to interact with certain abilities. I suggest we add a flag to certain moves to determine if they spin a Pokemon. For example, with this, Rapid Spin could be described as a spin attack that can also eliminate such moves as Bind, Wrap, and Leech Seed. This raises the user's speed stat and spins the user. And for something like Hurricane, that would now read as the user attacks by wrapping the target in a fierce wind. This move spins and may also confuse the target. Moves can now either spin the user or the target. With this flag added to certain attacks, we can now introduce the ability Dizzy. Dizzy is the new exclusive hidden ability of Spinda. If Spinda is spun by a move, all of its stats are increased by one stage. So for example, if a Dizzy Spinda clicks Rapid Spin, it would gain plus one speed and then a further plus one in every one of its stats. This would be absolutely broken if it weren't given to Spinda, a Pokemon that I feel I need to remind you has 60 stats across the board. This wouldn't make Spinda amazing, but it'd give it a really solid gimmick for singles and even in some VGC formats, allowing for it to boost and sweep, which is something it was never able to do before, except for that one mediocre contrary superpower set that never actually works, but people keep wanting to make work. As far as the moves that spin the user, I would say these would include Rapid Spin, Ice Spinner, Steel Roller, Rollout, and Teeter Dance. Moves that spin the target could include Twister, Hurricane, Sand Tomb, Whirlpool, and Fire Spin. A fairly short list, all things considered, but enough for the ability to have a use case and maybe other spin-related abilities to be introduced. Maybe for him on top for Dawn Fan. I don't know. I'm not gonna lie. I feel like I really cooked with the Dizzy ability. Like, imagine Spinda hits the field, clicks Teeter Dance, confuses everything but itself, and then Omni Boosts. That's a beast of a Pokemon. Maybe then my boy can get something done in a tournament. I don't know, that's probably just cope. But these are just some ideas I had for buffing Gen 3 Pokemon. I also wanted to thank my friend James Evans, who is a very accomplished competitive Pokemon player, a world champion, international champion, regional champion. He's got like every title. I want to thank him for helping me out with this. It was actually really helpful. He like helped me workshop Bayonet and stuff. So thank you to him. I actually really love this generation of Mons. So I took some extra time to make sure that the ideas that we worked on just went a little bit deeper than give them stats. I mean, Game Freak did give Shiftry Wind Rider in Generation 9, so the least I could do was match their Freak there. If I missed a few obvious Pokemon like Plusle, Minon, or Saviper, it's because I actually covered them in previous topic videos, so you can dig through the playlist if you want to find them yourself. If you enjoyed this video on Ampain Time, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. It'd mean the world to me. If you want to support me further, you can check out my Patreon page or become a YouTube channel member by clicking the Join button below the video. This gets you sneak peeks at future videos and even some bonus content. You also see your name at the end of my videos like all these lovely people. Special thanks to my most boosted supporters Ant Media UK, Avatar67, and Kayla Thompson for their generous pledges. Another way to support me is to check out all the videos in the playlist on screen right now. I know you'll find something in there that you'll enjoy. I also have a second channel where I talk about the current VGC metagame trends and a Twitch channel where I stream almost every day, both of which will be in the description down below. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!